Hey folks, how's it going? This is Iron Seagull here, back with another speculation video. So, pretty recently, we did get our first roadmap of 2022. This one was titled Sim Thing to Celebrate. This isn't going to be a recap of the whole roadmap since I already did that in a previous video, but I want to focus on the game pack, which does seem to have the most discussion going on right now. A game pack that throws a party for love. While we don't have any further details at the time of making this video, there are a couple of things that have come out of EA and Maxis in the past that give us possible clues as to at least the general direction of what this next game pack is going to go in. By now you're probably wondering, why do you have Laundry Day stuff playing on the screen? That's probably one of the most unromantic stuff packs ever. <laughs> well, it was the victor of the first ever community stuff pack vote. And there is a theme that didn't win that kind of goes with what this next game pack is. Because we do have wedding stuff at the bottom. Make your Sims Big Day an even bigger celebration with new wedding content and experiences. Potential areas of focus include wedding customization, the ceremony, and cultural diversity. Sounds pretty interesting to me where you could make the wedding a more elaborate setup. Maybe, I'm just thinking about like that wedding event in Animal Crossing New Horizons. <laughs> yeah, maybe it could be like that in terms of the setting up part at least. The cultural diversity part also sounds really intriguing to me. That could bring an interesting spin to this pack that might be a bit more surprising, not really so expected, and not just focused on North American traditional weddings. With this game pack, at least to me, sounding like as if it is going to focus a lot on weddings, this does seem to fit pretty well. And we have had a history of some things from stuff pack votes coming true. For example, with the eco living stuff idea, that was the theme that actually got the most votes, but it ended up focusing on laundry. So it didn't really focus on solar energy or home technology. But then years later, we got a whole expansion pack focusing on that with Eco Lifestyle. And we did get the off the grid lot trait in a free update just before Island Living came out as well. None of the other ideas in this particular community vote I think really came true. Sure, I guess you could tie Tiny Living and Paranormal stuff to Starter Home stuff and Dangerous stuff respectively, but eh, not really. They're still pretty different. However, there was the second community stuff pack vote where arts and crafts won as the theme and got narrowed down to knitting, but another very popular idea from that was Happy Haunts, and some of this stuff ended up coming true only a few months after Nifty Knitting stuff, with the seance table, haunted house lot rate, and a twist on the ghost hunter freelancer career all being a part of that. By the way, as a side note, I really hope we still get that Grim Reaper freelancer career at some point because there's just a ridiculous amount of potential in that. Like, they just gotta do it someday. Even if it were to be in The Sims 5 instead of The Sims 4. Like, come on, this is just too good of an idea to pass up. From what I remember at the time with that wedding stuff pack idea, I think it was pretty popular. And I think it is really good that they are reviving these lost stuff pack ideas since there is potential in them. And I mean, we really saw that with Paranormal stuff, arguably the best stuff pack that they've ever released for this game. I do understand where people are coming from when they say, oh, well, if we just do every single stuff pack vote idea, then that makes the voting process redundant, right? Well, yeah, I don't think we need to do every single scrapped idea but at least do the most popular runner-ups, and I think it's okay. I don't think it makes the voting process useless. However, that's not all I have to show off regarding that stuff pack vote, because even though Wedding Stuff did lose, they posted a couple of concept art pieces of how it could have looked like had it won, if it had gone in a more rustic theme direction. Looking back at these now, it does remind me of Cottage Living a bit, but still, I can't deny, this stuff looks all really cute, and maybe some of these items would still make it into the next game pack. If this game pack does end up focusing very much on weddings, then it would be great if there could be multiple themes represented that you could have for weddings and not just rustic ones. 
There is one other thing that could heavily hint as to what this new game pack could be all about, and that is from a round of surveys way back in 2017. And one of the things that appeared was this Sims 4 love life idea. Sims interested in matters of the heart are going to be pleased with the Sims 4 love life. Go on a variety of romantic dates at all new locations or be the matchmaker for your friends. Experience wedding fun and drama from asking parents for permission to enjoying the honeymoon. Go on dates, have your first dates, blind dates or group dates at a variety of new locations from the lover's garden to the moonlit cafe complete with private concert stage. Be a matchmaker. Practice your matchmaking skills by setting your sims up on dates, give romantic advice, and navigate the dating drama as a matchmaker. And throw a wedding. Weddings are bigger than ever. Ask sims' parents for permission to marry. Experience bachelor or bachelorette party fun. Even plan the details of your big day. This actually sounds kind of promising to me because it's broader than just weddings, it's about love life in general, and this sounds a bit more in line with what the scope of a game pack should be, because I don't want this next game pack to be like another Dream Home Decorator situation, where at least in my opinion, it felt like just a larger stuff pack with more objects than what a stuff pack would have. I am a little concerned that there's no mention of online dating or the sort of like attraction system we had in The Sims 2 and The Sims 3, but maybe that's because those things would go more in a free update alongside the pack rather than being exclusive to the pack itself. I mean, how well would matchmaking even work if there was no attraction system to support it? And maybe the matchmaking could be done online rather than only in person. I'm not sure how often I would actually use the matchmaking idea, but it does remind me of the Gypsy Matchmaker from The Sims 2 Nightlife, except in this case you'd actually be the matchmaker instead of being the customer. That also makes me wonder if this would be an actual career rather than, oh, you just pretend to be the matchmaker. It's just the whole wording of it. I don't know, it does sound a little career-ish to me. While we already have dates in the base game, I think that is pretty good to have the idea of blind dates, and even group dates, wonder if that would also include the possibility of awkward third wheeling. <laughs> but that is kind of funny they mention Lover's Garden because that sounds very much like Romantic Garden stuff, but that stuff pack came out in 2016, so it's not like it was before that time. And the Moonlit Cafe sounded like, okay, well, what's so different about that in comparison to get-togethers cafes other than maybe being more outdoor focused. But then there is that private concert stage part, and that makes me think of that stage we got with Sim Sessions last year. So <laughs> even though this whole time I've been thinking, oh, they'll probably reuse it for a band's game pack, maybe they'll also reuse it for this love-themed game pack. Honeymoons are also mentioned, though there is no talk of any new world that would go with it, but if they are going to put in honeymoons, I think it would be nice if there was some kind of new world to go with it, because I think that would draw more excitement to that feature rather than it just being only, like say if you only have the base game, and it's just, oh yay, we got married to Willow Creek, so now let's go on our honeymoon to Newcrest or Oasis Springs. Of course, these are surveys and old ones at that, so there is a very high chance that not all of these things will come true, or maybe none at all. <laughs> Perhaps this could go in a completely different direction that nobody expects. But either way, I am pretty interested in seeing what form this game pack will take. I suspect we will know sooner rather than later because it is the first release noted on the roadmap and they do tend to go in order. Also, with it being a love theme of some kind, it is very likely going to come out just before Valentine's Day. But feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. 
and be sure to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with my latest gaming content, including life simulations and more. So I will talk to you all later, and have a great day. Thanks for watching!